When I was a kid, I wanted a puppy. When I say wanted one, it was more like I was obsessed with the idea of getting a dog. Every day after school, I would walk to the library to scan the pages of the World Atlas of Dog Breeds. I'd imagine a Siberian Husky with bright blue eyes pulling me to school on a sled, or a golden retriever waiting at the bus stop to walk me home after class. I would see puppies everywhere. Amorphous clouds would take the form of tiny terriers, and spilt milk would look like beagles on the run. It was like the world was a Rorschach inkblot and all I could see was dogs. This one's a Labradoodle. This one looks like a Scotty? This one's a butterfly. No, no wait, it's a dog. It's definitely a dog. About once a week, I gently remind my parents about my dream. I'd bring it up at dinner and quickly get shot down with the well-worn line, Zoe, there will be no dogs in this house. Do you know how much work it would be to take care of you three and a dog? It's not happening. On my eighth birthday, I was still puppyless and tired of hearing the old excuses, so I decided to ramp up my efforts. Casually, I'd leave scanned pictures from the atlas around the house, taped to the Oberweiss jug, in my dad's jacket pocket, and under their pillows. Whenever we'd go to the mall, I'd ask my mom for a penny to throw into the fountain. Then, with my mother watching, and with great gusto and bravado, I would wish for a puppy! puppy. I must have spent $10 in pennies. As it grew closer to Chrismica, there was still no sign of softening. I didn't want to bring God or Santa into the fray, but when times are tough, you gotta know what your resources are. So at bedtime, I'd wait for the sound of my mom coming up the stairs to tuck me in. I'd jump out from under the covers and kneel down next to my mattress with my hands clasped above my head. With my head bowed, I would pray out loud to Santa, Dear Santa, please bring me a puppy, any puppy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My mom would stop at the door to roll her eyes and her exasperated sighs would give me nothing but hope. On Christmas Eve, we went out to a concert in the city. On the drive back to the house, my parents were exchanging gross, lovey looks and giggling. My dad never giggles. Something was up. At home, I rushed headlong at my front door, busted through and skidded to a halt at the Christmas tree. But I could only see rat presents. Where was, where was, where, there. The tiniest, almost inaudible, whew, frozen. I held my breath, waiting for the sound again. I followed the tiny barks like sonar pings all the way around the tree. And there she was, a red ribbon around her white neck. I picked her up over my head like Simba and we made eye contact and I swear the circle of life was playing in the deep background. We took her outside for the first time. My brother tossed her in the snow. Her little white body would disappear completely. I would get so scared that she had gone too deep or that we would not be able to find her again. But without fail, her curious nose would emerge like a little black button in a sea of white. Two nights ago, on the evening of Easter Sunday, Lucy died. The next day, my brother and I drove south to our childhood home and buried her peacefully in the shade of an apple tree. Her two boys ran around the yard, happy for the space and the sunlight. As we said our last goodbyes and laid her down with yellow flowers, a soft rain began to fall. And somewhere in the deep background, I swear the circle of life was playing. Silent night was shattered by the sounds inside my mind. I'm just one too many mornings and a thousand miles.